One of the things I think is very interesting, we've done some work very recently where we took a flock of sheep, a flock of 800 sheep, and we split the ewes into two groups, about 400 in each group. And for two years, we had one group where we were going in and treating sheep within three days of them becoming lame. And we were giving them an injection of antibiotic and a foot spray. And the other group were managed in a more typical way for a sheep farm. So within a week or so of becoming lame, the sheep were caught and turned. And if they had foot rot or scald, they were trimmed and sprayed, but they weren't given an injection. And over the two years, we looked at the difference in productivity between the sheep on the farm. And the sheep in the group which had got this rapid treatment were more productive. We had um, fewer barren ewes, fewer ewe and lamb deaths, larger number of lambs born per ewes put to the ram. And um, finally, overall, in terms of finishing, the, there were 18 extra lambs finished per 100 ewes put to the ram in our treatment group compared with the control group. And Quite remarkably, I think, the, these lambs also finished on average six weeks earlier. So the estimated extra income to the flock was somewhere between four and six pounds per ewe in that group, whether she was lame or not. So a substantial increase in income from really keeping on top of uh, foot rot in particular. I think as far as the finishing is concerned, what, what we're seeing is that by dampening down the lameness levels in the ewes, we don't see so many lame lambs. So I think that might be part of the effect. The other big effect is that our ewes were in better body condition. Because when they became lame, they were only lame for a couple of days, they carried on eating, and so they maintained condition. And of course, they can then feed the lambs more. And so what we saw was those lambs were going away before weaning, um, having fed really well off their mums. And they didn't have that big check that you see at weaning. And that six weeks difference was probably, a lot of it was probably the difference between finishing off the ewe and finishing later after weaning. I think the, the initial work that we did, we were asking farmers in England and, and the rest of the UK, what, what were they doing to manage lameness in sheep? And the farmers who told us they had low levels of lameness, so we're talking about under 5% of lame sheep, were moving away from routine behaviours with the flock and moving much more towards catching and treating individual lame sheep. And that approach seems to work because we, we catch those sheep quickly and we stop them from being lame. So we have the um, improved production that I mentioned earlier. And we can also move away from some of the really unpleasant flock procedures which take a lot of effort and a lot of time. And one of the things that was really quite remarkable with that first piece of work that we did was that farmers who were doing a lot of foot trimming also told us that their levels of lameness in their flock were higher, somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. So there seemed to be a very unintuitive relationship between lots of flock management and high levels of lameness. And that's why that triggered our research into looking at whether by treating individuals can we control lameness in a much better way than if we were managing it by waiting for a certain number of sheep to be lame and then treating the flock. And our work would suggest that it's rapid treatment that keeps lameness levels down. One of the things that we've identified is that farmers can definitely spot lame sheep. There's no issue, even a very mildly lame sheep, we know that farmers can pick them out. One of the things that varies is whether farmers catch the first lame sheep that they see in a group that's very mildly lame. Some farmers are waiting until there are five sheep that are sort of mildly lame, or even five or ten fairly severely lame sheep. So the first thing is, catch that first mildly lame sheep because if she's infectious, if she's got foot rot and you treat her quickly, she won't pass the disease to other sheep and you'll be catching fewer sheep at the end of the day. So catch the first one. Obviously then you've got to know what's going on. And one of the things we found out is that whilst farmers recognise the different foot lesions, uh, sometimes they're not using quite the right name. And that can be quite important if, if you then go out and seek advice. Um, so if you want to know how to sort out a foot rot problem in your flock, it's really important to know that you're dealing with foot rot. So turn the sheep and have a look. The six common lesions that we see are scald, which is just an inflammation of the skin between the feet. Um, very common in lambs in the springtime. It's a lovely, nice, wet spring day that you can hear behind us. It's a, a classic time when we would expect to see scald spreading in lambs very quickly because it seems to spread very well in warm, wet weather. Um, the ewes themselves can have skull, but uh, quite often they'll also have foot rot. They'll have underrunning of the horn and a very, very classic nasty smell that goes with it. 
Uh, another really important infectious condition is contagious ovine digital dermatitis. Now, not all flocks have got this condition yet. It's, it's fairly recent. It came into the UK, we think, in about 1999. It's spreading through flocks, and uh, the first year that a flock's infected, the disease levels are really high. You can get 30, 50 percent of lame sheep. Very, very nasty disease. The whole hoof horn capsule can come away, so sheep are lame for a long time, and it really sets the lambs back. So those are the three infectious diseases that we uh, are, uh, see very commonly and we're quite concerned about. And then there are three which are not infectious but are still a problem and still something that we need to be aware of when we turn sheep. There's abscesses in the feet, which although they're caused by bacteria, they don't spread from sheep to sheep, and can cause a, a nasty level of lameness because the foot's very hot, it's very full of a pus under pressure, so not surprisingly the sheep will be very lame when it has an abscess. Uh, toe granuloma, which is a little strawberry-like lesion that you see on the bottom of the foot. When you touch it, it bleeds very easily. Very, very painful for the sheep because that's living tissue that's come out from the horn. Uh, and the last one is shelly hoof, which is part of a white line type disease. Often doesn't cause lameness, but when it does, it will be either because mud is impacted into horn that's flaking away from the side of the wall, uh, or maybe even because foot rot's got in there and there's an infection with foot rot. So those are the six common foot lesions that we see in sheep.